Okay. Uh, once you're here, please, uh, if you can hear me, so just type yes uh, if you can hear me. Okay. Okay, good. So let's start with our lecture. So our first lecture about the 2D animation is the principles of animation. Those who have taken my MCM 350 class a long time back, uh, they might have studied the principle of design. So same as that, we have principles of animation. What is the principle of animation? Principle of animation are the set of rules that you have to follow when you are doing an animation. Whether is it a 2D animation or 3D animation. So any kind of animation if you are doing, you have to follow uh, the rules. Because if you will not follow the rules, what will happen? Your uh, animation will not look good. Okay, It will not look realistic. And that is basically uh, the issue, okay? Uh, so you have to keep in mind, uh, you have to follow certain rules when we are uh, working on an, uh, our animation, okay? So now let's go through all these animation uh, principles over here. Let me just... Uh, this okay now here we have uh, 12 principles of animation okay so there are 12 principles of animation that every 2d animation artist or 3d animation artist if he follows his animation will look perfect okay now there are two main categories of animation and let's see what are those two categories of animation the two categories of animation basically are computer assisted animation and computer generated animation. Computer assisted animation is basically uh, like, a fo like uh, mainly fo followed in the 2D animation. Also in the 3D animation, but mainly computer assisted animation is followed by the 2D animation. Okay. Then computer generated animation is uh, uh, like specially followed by the 3D animation. There are some 2D animation application that follows computer generated animation, but mainly it is related to 3D animation. What is the computer assisted animation? The computer assisted animation is basically a, a technique in which you do most of the animation part, but the computer will assist you. Computer will become like an assistant to you and computer will help you in completing your animation. Okay. Which is basically inking, virtual camera, managing data and etc. Okay. Then what is computer generated animation? Computer generated animation are basically also divided into two more parts. Low level techniques and high level techniques. Okay. Low level techniques are basically precisely specifying motion. Uh, most of the 2D animation application uses the low level techniques. Okay. High level technique describe general motion behavior. Okay. Which uh, is basically related to computer uh, like uh, generated 3D animation. So low level techniques mostly for the 2D, high level techniques mostly for the 3D. Computer assistant. Uh, assisted animation is uh, highly followed by 2D and sometimes there is a new technique which we call 2.5 means 2.5D two, two animation like they are half 2D and half 3D okay like the camera can move in a 3D environment but your characters over there are 2D now let's move to the computer ge uh, generated animation and let's see what is the low level technique and high level technique First, let's see what is the low level technique. The low level technique is basically uh, divided into two parts. Okay. Uh, like basically not two parts, like you can say mainly it is a one way of doing the low level technique, which is known as the 
shape interpolation in between. What is the shape interpolation in between? It means like you draw first part of the animation, like suppose your animation is about this boy, he's picking up a strawberry from the ground. Okay, so what you will do is that you will draw first scene where he is bowing down, picking up the strawberry. If you will see this hand is down, he is, uh, you know, he's bowing down to pick up the strawberry. Then in the last scene, you will show that he already has picked up the strawberry and he's looking at it and smiling at it. These are the two uh, frames that you will make. Now, these two frames are known as the keyframe. In between these two keyframes, you will draw that he is going down slowly, then picking up, moving his hand, smiling, whatever. So those parts are known as in between. Anything between the first frame and the last frame are known as in between. So this is uh, you actually know uh, like what you want to do, and you will do with the first and the last frame. And in between, the computer will help you to create. Okay. You can do manually also. You can draw in between frames manually. Also, the computer can help you. So this is the way of doing low level techniques where you are doing the work, okay, and computer is there helping you. So this is the low level technique. High level technique is what? It's generated motion with sets of rules or constraints. For example, physically based motion. Now, what is the physically based motion? In 3D applications, what you will do is that you do simulation. Simulation means like this, you can see there is this uh, a pot, okay, a steel pot in which you can eat food. In 3D animation, you will tell the 3D application that this is my steel uh, bowl or utensil. This will be made out of steel. It is uh, maybe 5 kg, it is little heavy and it is fall from this distance and it will fall on a wooden floor and that wooden floor is made out of softwood and the weight of that softwood is this. So once you will give them all these physical information, so you will play the simulation. When you will play the simulation, automatically 3D application will generate a simulation like this will fall then this will go like this because 3d application will already know that how big is the bowl how heavy is the bowl how soft is the floor how the bouncing should react so based on the physical information it will generate a realistic output that's the high level technique where the computer works exactly the whole thing okay so when the computer works on everything, it gives you a realistic animation. This is mainly done inside 3D application. 2D, there are some 2D applications, but 3D are more into this part. Okay. Now, how the animation got started? What uh, made the animation? Uh, like uh, how the animation was created? Who made the animation first? And what was the reason behind it? Let's see heritage of the animation. So, uh, the animation was actually started around 1800s, usually, uh, you can say in 17th century. It started with some equipment known as a zoetrope or a wheel of life, okay. This is known as zoetrope, okay, and also it is called wheel of life. Then also flip book. Flip book is like what? It's like a book. You, which uh, on uh, with the number of pages you draw on every page and then you flip the page very fast so it looks like that animation is moving that is a flip flip book but in our uh, in this case we have this zoetrope which was a wheel of life so in 1800 it was used to uh, make home decoration sometimes or sometimes in the exhibition people used to come and the artists what they do they use a strip like a circular strip and on that strip they draw a uh, like different frames and when they draw different frames each frame is doing a different thing okay if a boy is playing with a football so in first uh, drawing he will show that the boy is standing then the boy goes to the ball then he's trying to kick the ball then he kicks to a ball something like that 
so it will happen in different number of scenes and there will be hole inside this z crop like you will see that each part here have a hole if you will look inside this hole okay this vertical hole and you will spin this a uh, circular root rope so it will look like actually that boy is playing with the uh, football so that's the that's how the animation concept was started okay now we have here uh, the television release of it to the animation it got released with uh, 1920s uh, like comic known as Felix the Cat, okay, which was by Otto. So this was a comic used to be in the books, but then it became one of the first animated character with, uh, with personality, okay. So first animated character with personality means that before Felix the Cat, the animation never had a personality. The animation was not revolving around a single character. It was just a story like a ball, like a boy kicking a ball, car moving, bird flying. There was no personality. This was just showing. It was just showing a scene. But when the Felix the cat became an animation, it was about this cat who had a personality. Means like the story was revolving around a cat. Cat was able to do things. Or was able to move was able to uh, do uh, like some actions so story was revolving around him so it became one of the first cartoon that was an animated character with a personality same we had uh, the force to recon with sound and with uh, with sound and Walt Disney okay so what happened was that uh, this idea this uh, Felix the Cat inspired so many people and it inspired Walt Disney also. So Walt Disney came up with the idea that why don't you do an animation? But that animation will become a, a like a mouse animation. Can you see over here? This is the first Walt Disney animation about the Mickey Mouse. And the idea was that there will be animation of a mouse of a character. Okay. But he will be speaking there will be a sound so he made an animation with a sound unlike felix the cat because it was a silent animation walt disney came up with an animation with the sound okay and some new techniques uh walt disney brought up what were those uh, new techniques those were storyboard okay so storyboard was that the artist used to create storyboards like how the animation will look like, how will be the story. So on every page they ha have to do some different kind of uh, scenes of the animation and that becomes a story. So the storyboard concept comes from Walt Disney. Okay. Then a uh, pencil sketch just to show rough animation like how the animation will look like means uh, it was just for review purposes, it was not a final animation draft sketch. So drafting was also a concept started by Walt Disney. Multi-plan camera stand. Okay, so there were multi-plane uh, like a plane camera stand uh, where different cameras were there and artists were capturing different scenes of animation so that it can move from one scene to another scene. So it should not be in one scene. Uh, the animation should not show only one stage because before it only shows one location, one character and at that one location, the whole animation finishes. So they came up with the idea that there will be multiple locations. So there will be multiple, uh, like multi-plan ca like camera so that each part they will, uh, like they can capture. Also something like, uh, like a scene will be there in front of that scene there will be a uh, like a character behind there will be a background then behind the background there will be a secondary background then uh, you know tertiary background then keep on going so all these background will be in front of each other and you can manually move them at their own pace that was one uh, one more uh, like feature of the multi plan camera stand uh, there was color 
in the, in the animation. But uh, Walt Disney animation were not the first one to use the color. Some other people used the color as well before the Walt Disney animation. But sound was used for the first time in the animation known as the uh, Steamboat Willy. So if you will search for Steamboat Willy on YouTube, you can find this video and we can watch this video. Uh, and it, this video is the one of the first videos. Okay. Now, uh, later on, what did Walt Disney did? When his animation, Steamboat Willy, co uh, got quite famous and he started to make more cartoons, he came up with 12 principles. So that the animation, the, the future animations, the next and an, the next animations will look much more perfect and much more uh, attractive. Okay, so he came up with those twelve principles of animation. Now these two, uh, twelve uh, principles of, of animation was introduced by Walt Disney. So during the late 1920s through the 1930s. Walt Disney worked to improve the techniques of the studio animators. Okay. Disney set up drawing classes for his animators at the like, Coinart Art Institute in Los Angeles under Inspector Don Graham. Okay. So uh, between 1920s and 30s, he wanted to improve the animation uh, techniques of, of his studio. So what he did was that he started to give classes to all the animators who were working in his studio, okay? And there was a, like uh, like there is a Conard Art Institute in Los Angeles, and there was an instructor known as Don Graham who was also doing 2D animation at that time. So with the help of him, he gave the uh, he gave you, you can say some training to his own employees so they can get better and better in the animation part. So through these lessons and interaction between Disney and his staff, a set of 12 principles was developed. So while he was giving some lectures, some training to his employee, during that time, a set of 12 principles was developed. 12 rules of animation was developed so that animators can follow them and they can have a great and a unique sort of uh, outcome okay, in terms of animation. So these principles were used in the Disney animated production, included Snow White, Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and Bambi. These are all the old, very oldest animated animation movies. All these movies used those 12 principles of animation. They are very old uh, movies. Snow White, Pinocchio, Fantasia, during uh, like, you know, 30s, 40s, and 50s, like very old movies. Okay. Now, Let's see all these 12 principles one by one. Let's first see the first one, which is squash and stretch. This is the widely used, the most famous principles of animation, squash and stretch. Okay. So to study squash and stretch, we will take an example of a ball. Squash and stretch can be applied on any object. It can be applied on a ball. It can be applied on a box. It can be applied on a car. It can be applied on a person. Can be applied on anything but we are taking an example of a ball here okay now here you will see there is a cushion stretch and in this cushion stretch we have a living uh, like a, like a ball over here what is cushion stretch it gives a living flesh resource during motion a ball is not a living object it's like a uh, non-living object it's like a stiff object but if you are looking at an animation like a cartoon, so if a ball looks very stiff, very normal, like in real life, so that uh, thing that you are watching on the television will not look like an animation. It will not be fun to kids. It will be not fun thing to watch. So if you will give it a look and feel of a living flesh, mean like a real human or like a living being, so it will quite become interesting. Okay. So that's what this question stretch do. It exaggerates the, uh, the deformation, okay, which will emphasize motion and impact. Suppose a ball will start falling down. When the ball is falling down, 
the ball will be stretched like it is stretched in the air and then it is falling down on the ground and when it falls on the ground it squishes okay then it goes back up so it gives a kind of funny sort of feeling okay so although the objects deform like rubber they must maintain volume while being squished and stretched so it will look like a rubber or it will look like a living object when it is coming down but one thing you have to keep in mind is that it should develop or maintain the volume of that ball it means that if the ball is stretched like here the ball is stretched so what will happen the size of the ball will get stretched because if you're stretching something uh, in real life the size changes okay if you will take a balloon if you stretch it the size of the balloon also changes if you squishes the balloon from top and bottom so what will happen it will become bigger from left and right also okay so this is also happens this also happens in uh, in the real life okay so this you have you can also uh can do, like you know like that's what you do like uh, in uh, in the squish and stretch if you are squeezing from top and you are squeezing from the bottom so from side from here and from here also it gets a little bigger so you have to maintain the volume okay now a bouncing ball will squish or elongate on impact and stretch vertically as it leaves the point of impact now this is a bouncing ball it comes when it's coming it will stretch like from top and bottom it stretches and when it goes down from top and bottom it squeezes but from sides it will get uh, like you know a wider same thing then it will repeat when it goes up it gets stretches from top and bottom and from left and right it becomes smaller okay because it is stretching so when it is stretching it will become smaller from side when it is squeezing it will become bigger in size so this is a set of uh, rule of squish and stretch that you will apply every time using uh, if, when you're using squish and stretch so this is the most well known and often used principle in the animation okay so here you can see there is this animation okay uh, part of a ball if i play this so you can see the ball squishes and stretches when it goes up let me play again it squishes and then stretches and then squishes and stretches when it goes up okay so this is how it looks but this is a 3d animation that means this can uh, the 12 set of principles is for all kind of animation whether it is 2d or 3d all kind of animation follows the uh, this set of rules now let's see in detail more about the squish and stretch now here there is a ball here i have this ball okay so a rubber ball sitting on a table retains its normal round shape it is normally round like its original shape nothing is work happening to it then suddenly it rolls okay from the table and begins to stretch okay while it is falling down so you can see it is stretching from this point and this point and from here and from here it is getting uh squeezed like it is getting smaller or uh, like thinner from here and from here but from here and here it is getting wider stretch as it is moving towards the gravity here is the gravity it is uh you know becoming more and more stretchy from the uh, from this side and this side but from sides it is getting thinner as it impacts on the ground it has impact on the ground like it falls on the hard surface what will happen it squeezes from top and bottom and from sides it gets wider then slowly it goes up again and then it stretches again this side and this side becomes more stretch like you know stretched out but this side and this side becomes thinner then it goes to this part and you can see that it is now in this form little bit stretchy not too stretchy then when it goes to the other part it will go as this one again so as it is going forward and forward it is getting uh, squished and stretched uh, in at that uh, like you know in that way so then it will continue like the way it is okay now as i told you uh, the ball over here we were take as an example so this doesn't mean that it can be only applied to the ball it can be applied also to the 
uh, human beings or we can say people that you are uh, to, uh, you are making in the 2D animation, you are making objects inside the 2D animation, anything that you want, it can be applied on both. Now let's see how it will apply on a person or a cartoon character. Let's see a cartoon character with cushion spread. So here, here we have a cartoon character. He is now doing an action. So he's squashed over here from top and bottom. It is squashed and it gets a little bit wider from the sides. You can see that his legs are moving outward. His hips is going this side. His elbows are going this side. So it is maintaining the volume. Okay. And it, he's squashing. Then he stretches. Then when he stretches, he goes taller. Things from there got like gets like thinner. Okay. Thinner, not like it will not distort or deform his body. Thinner means that he will be in a straight position, like a thin position, not like this position. Here, his, his size is same. He's not changing the size, but he is uh, kind of in a, uh, like a fatter or, or you can say wider uh, like position. Okay, so that's how in humans, uh, in characters, cartoon characters, you can also apply. Another example of cartoon character, you can see that facial expression okay suppose squash his face is squashed okay he's listening then he listened to something like a bad news or something like a weird news or awkward news or scary news he stretches his face his face gets stretched his hair goes a little bit upwards eyes got stretched also eyes got bigger okay ears pop out face gets uh, stretched next got uh, like gets taller okay because he just heard a very surprising news then how he will react on the surprising news if the news is to make him angry again he will become squashed but this time more squashed so here it was less squashed so less a uh, wider uh, you know uh, def uh, you can say uh, like size was here the deformation was here but if it is a uh, he's really angry and the squish is more uh, like you know higher so the sides uh, of, of, or you can say the wider position of the sides is more uh, you can say uh, anger looking okay so you can see from the sides it's more like uh, less like you can more wider or, or, or whatever like there is okay so this is the uh, like the first principle which is squish and stretch the second principle is anticipation which gives you a little bit more of a uh, like feeling of uh, you can say a kind of a feeling of a uh, something that is going to happen next okay what is that anticipation the word anticipation in real life means to predict what is going to happen in future so it's same like an animal how in animation anticipation work? Suppose we have here a frog and we want to show a frog, a cartoon frog, he wants to jump. In animation, if you will show that he's directly jumping, then what will happen? Your animation will not look good. Okay. So you will apply the anticipation rule. What is the anticipation rule? You will not show the frog will directly jump you will show that the frog before jumping he will move little bit down he will bend his knees so that people will know now he is going to jump because he's bending his knees so you have to show people that what the uh, uh, what the character will do or what the object will do if he is going to jump so you have to show them that he is going into a jumping position once the people will know, okay, the next scene, maybe he will jump. Then he will start jumping so that people will understand what's going to happen. Okay, if you will not show them what's going to happen and make him jump directly, people will not understand what actually happened in the animation. Okay, so that's what all the whole anticipation about. Now, other thing you can do is that you can play with other body parts here or in objects, other object parts. In this case, uh, the eyes that you will see are a bit exaggerated okay it became a little bit wider okay 
and also his face is showing that he is going to scream. That means he is going to jump, but he is going to jump not with excitement, not with happiness. Okay, he is going to jump because he is scared. So the facial expression is showing them what his mood is there, what his feelings are, and his knees over here is showing what he is going to do. So he is going to jump, but out of uh, frightness, out of being scared of something. Okay, the formula for uh, most animation is anticipation, action, and reaction. Okay, so what is the anticipation? Antip uh, anticipation is like first you will see what he is going to do, then there will be an action. Suppose in this case, what he is going to do? He is going to jump. Okay, out of uh, fear, and then you can see his uh, bending his knee. So he will then jump out of fear, and then once he will jump, there will be a reaction. Means he will he is scared of something, but after jumping, he will be saved from that thing, or he will do something funny and people will laugh. So that that will be the reaction. So this is a little bit formula, uh, like a like a bit of a formula of anticipation. You show anticipation. You do the action and there will be a reaction. If you don't have the anticipation, then action, then reaction, then it will not work. So when you do the anticipation, you have to do the action and reaction. Just like in the squish and stretch, you have a set of rules that when you squeeze something, so uh, it gets thinner from the side. If you squash, uh, squash something, so what will happen? It gets wider from the uh, side. Okay. Same way here we have the rule of anticipation that there will be an anticipation, there will be an action, and then the reaction. Okay, so let's see how uh, in animation this is done usually. So here we have a scene of a person. He is holding a ball. He is a baseball player, and he is going to throw a ball now. But he is going to throw a ball uh, without any anticipation. So if he will just throw a ball. Just after this scene, so what will happen? It will not look good. Okay, it will look really bad. So you have to make sure that there is an anticipation. If he is not standing like this, if there is a little bit exaggerated pose, like his leg is forward for, and then what other uh, leg is going backward, uh, he is kind of bending his uh, splines and his uh, hands. So this shows what he is going to do next. He is going to swing the ball and throw it. So this will give you more, uh, uh, like of a prediction of what was going to happen. Okay. Otherwise, in this, he will just throw the ball and it will not show something uh, as we are looking for. Now we have here uh, this one, which is the anticipation of a man. Of a sorry, uh, of a same like a baseball player. And he wants to throw a ball. So to make it looking good, what you have to do? You have to show the anticipation that he is going to throw a ball. He is moving his body backward. Then you will show some action that he throws the ball. Okay. So that's the anticipation. This is the action. In cartoons like in uh, Disney, Donald Duck here, you can see that what is happening? He is, uh, he is showing anticipation that he is going to run. Okay. So what will be the anticipation that uh, it's his body language which is showing that he's going to be running because running will be the action and what is the reaction? Maybe you can see there is a water down. Maybe he will slip. So that is a reaction. So people will laugh. Okay. So that's one thing in the anticipation. Now uh, we have here uh, staging. Okay. Now what is the staging basically? Staging is quite a uh, principle of animation related to how you set up your scene. Okay, so let's see. Staging is the clear presentation of an idea. Whatever you, is your idea of, of animation, it can be shown clearly with the staging. Okay, suppose I want to show, okay, a scene where this guy is scared of this big guy. So what I will do is that I will make this guy on any either side looking upward and a big guy looking downward 
with a be uh, like you know beefy body and angry face so this will uh, clearly present my idea that he is scared and he is weak he is not scared and he is strong okay so i have set them up if i will make this guy bigger okay and looking down with a uh, with a uh, you know fearful face like a scared face and make him smaller but with the angry face and looking up so it will not make any sense because people will not understand what's going on because there is no clear presentation of an idea so the animator can use the camera viewpoint okay where the camera he wants to set framing of the shot how the shot will be set up and the position okay and also the timing if your timing and everything is wrong then also the, the, there is no good staging so this is all about the setting of your scene so whenever you set up your scene make sure your idea is clearly presented also the timing of the animation is important let's see one example here this one is a poor staging why this is poor staging because i cannot see their quarter view i can see only their left side and the right side of the character i cannot see their face i cannot see their other leg i cannot see any uh, any uh, you know uh, of the either, the other part of the side okay so this is a poor staging but if you will slightly rotate them and a uh, three quarter view just like this so i can at least see their other side of the of of themselves okay so the uh, you can see the ideas there of talking to each other because the idea here is same they're talking uh, they are talking to each other okay here they are also talking to each other it shows they are talking to each other but the staging is good now i can see their other halves here okay so that's uh, a, like a, a good way of doing the staging okay now uh, we have here uh, one thing which is known as uh, which is the fourth principle of an animation which is straight ahead versus pose to pose this is bit uh, technical rather than being uh, creative okay so let's see what it is straight ahead and versus pose to pose straight ahead animation means drawing the frames in sequence this leads to spontaneous motion it works well with abstract animation okay so what you do over here is that in every animation you make keyframes okay first keyframe like your animation for example is of a person okay he is basically kind of uh, picking a ball and then throwing okay that's your animation so what you are going to do is that you will make his first keyframe a, a man looking at the ball and then the last keyframe that he throws the ball okay so what is this this is a pose a pose he's looking down to the ball and a pose he's throwing the ball so this is pose to pose in between you will make the keyframe that it is he's going down then up then throwing but this is pose to pose means there is a pose looking down there is a pose throwing the ball what is straight ahead straight ahead every frame is not related to the first keyframe or the last keyframe the first first pose the last pose every keyframe is different okay so suppose imagine if i want to animate a fire so the fire in the first frame will be different and the fire in the last frame will be entirely different the fire in between every frame frame will be also different because fire does not follow up like a pose okay it's abstract means like every frame if you will record a fire from your uh, like flaming fire from your mobile phone and see every uh, every frame of the fire every frame of the fire is little different why they are different because they are not uh, following any pose they all are abstract okay so that's what the straight ahead is straight ahead every frame is different it is abstract not following any pose pose to pose there is a pose in, uh, in in the beginning and the in the end and the in between they are following that pose so that's what straight ahead and uh, pose to pose is now let's see we have here uh, follow through and overlap this is the fifth principle of animation 
what is follow through and overlap in this strategy follow through is the action that follows the main action it is the opposite of anti anticipation in anticipation you show what is going to happen next like a prediction but in follow through it shows something that happens once the main animation finishes okay so when the main animation finishes then you see the uh, whatever you see is known as the follow through okay but in and at anticipation you show something that happens before the main animation in follow through you so show uh, that after the main animation finishes for example when a baseball bat hits the baseball it does not stop abruptly okay like a person uh, like a cartoon character he's playing a bas baseball he swings his bat he's swinging his bat okay and when he hits the ball his bat does not stop over there maybe he's uh, he swings more he twists his body more or he falls down or do something that thing which happens after the main action what was the main action hitting the ball after the main action finishes whatever happens the next is the follow through for example a boxer does not freeze at the moment a punch lands in the cartoon suppose a cartoon is about a boxer and that boxer when he punches the other boxer okay so when he punches the other boxer his hand does not stop over there when his he hits, uh, hits the uh, other boxer the other boxer uh maybe in a funny way he falls down or his face uh moves in a very funny way that part is basically known as uh, you can say a uh, like a uh, follow through means whatever happens after the main uh action is known as a follow through now this is follow through and overlapping now you know about the follow through follow through is what whatever happens after the main action is known as the follow through now let's see what is the overlapping now overlapping action means that all elements do not stop at the same time okay like uh, whenever the follow through happens okay it little bit continues you can say it's a echo of animation little bit continues okay and that little bit continuation is known as the overlapping overlapping action also means that a new action may begin before the earlier action is terminated okay for example the same example here when a man hitting his uh, like his uh, like a bat to the baseball the legs may begin moving to first base while the bat is finishing the swing okay so when he is hitting the ball he might move his legs okay a little bit so moving the leg is known as the overlapping like a secondary animation starts okay so let's see this as an example over here now when this bunny is punching this dog okay the main action is so this is what anticipation happens then he punches so what is the punch, punching punching is the main action when the punching is finished whatever happens next what happens next he goes little bit down okay and then he goes little bit up and look at his uh, ears okay his ears are swinging okay so when he is going little bit down and coming back to his position is known as follow through and whatever happening is to his ear okay which is swinging is known as the overlap okay and both follow through on overlap here is happening after the main action which is the punch so when the punch is over whatever happens is the follow through and overlap so this is the opposite of anticipation because anticipation is ha happens before the main action follow through and over overlap happens after the main action okay so that's uh, what the follow through and overlap is let's see another example here so here as you can see this is the anticipation because anticipation happens before the main action main action is what is jumping so this happens before and when the main action happens he is going to now settle down so this is what this is the follow through 
and when the follow through is happening maybe his hair or hair is flying his clothes is flying that will be overlap okay so i hope this is clear now here we have slow in and slow out now slow in is slow out is also a technical bit technical like uh the uh, like the or uh, that the way one uh, we like studied before which was the uh kind of uh, like staging okay so this is uh no sorry uh like the uh, straight ahead and the pose to pose so this is also uh, like straight ahead and pose to pose this is also bit technical now what is the slow in and slow out slow in and slow out is also known as ease in and ease out most motion starts slowly accelerate and then slows again before stopping okay for example if a car okay is coming uh with 40 miles per hour immediately when stepping on accelerator and went to zero uh, miles per hour when hitting the brake so imagine when the car is coming very fast and you apply the brake so what happened it will not suddenly stop it will stop with a jerk so that is a slow in and slow out the speed okay another example is that gravity has an effect on slow in and slow out slow in slow out happens because of the gravity and because of the uh, movement of a person okay or or any object so let's see over here example of a bouncing ball if a bouncing ball uh, if a ball is bouncing if i throw the ball from the top so it will slowly come down but when it starts reaching to the gravity like to the ground so what will happen the speed will start increasing because gravity is pulling the ball okay so what was the slow uh, slow uh, slow out was the slow speed and then slow in was the fast speed okay so in 3d applications easing is created by setting up tension okay or spline but in 2d animation we do that with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, like ease in value and ease out value so let's see uh, with the example over here as well here uh, we have a person who is moving okay but when he starts to move he will not suddenly start to move with the same speed he will be slow a little bit and when he is slow a little bit, then he will start moving fast. Everything that starts starts with slow space and then it becomes faster. Then it becomes slow again. So slow out, you start with slow speed, slow in, then you uh, become faster in middle. So that's how the in, uh, in animation also works. Any cartoon character that you want to show start moving, you have to show them going slow in the beginning, then it becomes faster. So that's a, a major uh, rule inside the uh, in animation, slow in and slow out. You start with a slow pace and then it becomes faster in between, okay? So there's one more example over here if you see, okay? There is a pendulum. When it goes, like comes down here, so slows out, then slows and then it becomes faster, then slow, then fast, then slow, then fast, and then it goes like this, okay? So this is a clear example of the slow in and slow out. Now here, uh, we have the seventh principle, which is known as arc, okay? Now, uh, what is this about? This is about uh, your uh, movement. In cartoon, your hands should not move, your character hand should not move in straight direction or like a robot. It should move with a swing, like, very rhythm rhythmic very cartoony if you will see if you will see a real person movement and the cartoon person movement it will look different okay because cartoon anime cartoon cartoony people cartoonish people or you can say stylized cartoon characters move with a funny or you can say with a rhythm with a swing okay so for example here we have this example uh almost all natural motion is some form of an arc in reality we don't move like a robot we move in a uh, arc in 3d animation a motion arc is easily created using a spline curve so when we do 3d animation we have spline curve okay 
In 2D, we do have a spline curve, but it's not visible like 3D. We do it manually, okay? So now here, if you see a ball, so the ball does not move like this, okay? It does not move like this. It moves with a curve like this, okay? So that is known as arc. Here also, you can see that her hand does not move like a robot. It moves like an arc, like, you know, it goes like a swing, like a uh, curve. So that's what you should have arc inside your 2D animation. Whatever you want to move, move them with a rhythm, move them with a uh, arc, move them with a spline, or you can say move them with a, a curve, okay? Now, let's see how the curve looks like. This, if you will see over here, is basically a pointy uh, line. This should not be there inside your ani 2D animation. Your 2D animation should have this kind of curve, smooth curve like this, okay? That's how your line will, uh, will look like. Like suppose a man moving his hand, he moves his hand in a swing, you know, in very slowly like a rhythm, okay? Here you can see this is how the curve should be look like like if you want to show like a car is moving so you will not show a car is moving like this okay so you will show a car moving very slowly nicely over here okay now we have here second reaction which is the eighth principle of animation now what is the second reaction second reaction is that whenever animation is happening it's quite interesting interesting to show that the animation actually happens uh, like well, uh, if uh, uh, like a main act, main animation is happening you show another sort of animation is happening too like two animation at the same time but that second animation which is happening with the main animation should be little minor should not be realist like should not be actually you can say uh, should not be uh, like very much uh, a kind of a uh, like main action so otherwise what happens people's eyes will will be moved from the main action and, and it will go to the other action so second reaction is what it's a uh, it's a animation okay which is also happening with the first animation okay so let's see in detail here okay let's go to the second slide here uh, this should be wait there is a mistake over here. This is number eight. By mistake, I wrote uh, number uh, like number three. Okay. Now here, uh, what is the second reaction? Second reaction are minor action, minor animation that occur due to a major action. Most people blink their eyes when they turn their head. Suppose you have an animation. In that animation, a person is talking. So while the person is talking, that is the main action. But what is the second reaction? His eyes are blinking. That is the second reaction. Okay. And if you want to show a person's main action, he's moving his head to the left side. So when he's moving his head to the left side, so that is the main action. But what is the second reaction? Maybe his hair is a little bit swinging, flying when he's moving his head. So that is the second reaction. Uh, animation. So, facial expression are secondary animation. Okay, like uh, main action is the person is talking, and the facial expression when he's smiling or he's angry, that is the secondary reaction. Secondary action can be al are also uh, action caused by impact of another object. Okay, like suppose a person is moving main action, he hits a wall. Okay, when he hits the wall, his face becomes little bit. Uh, like a weird or you know squished uh, squished that's the second reaction okay so for example the movement of a ball that has become kicked is a second reaction so the main action is that the person is running and then he kicks the ball that's the main action but the second reaction is that the ball when it starts to move in this picture you can see both of them are talking okay main action second reaction is that the bubbles are coming from their mouth is the second reaction okay now let's see another example over here. This one is also maybe like this is what we count. This should be second reaction. Okay. Now how the second reaction helps in the, inside the animation. Now this is the example. Uh, 
somebody asks the cartoon character, are you angry at me? And the uh, cartoon character says, no, I am not angry at you normally. So it will not give uh, more life and meaning. But if there is a second reaction, it will give more life and feeling. Suppose now she is doing a second reaction and the other character asks her, are you angry at me? And she says, no, I am not angry at you. And then there is a knife in her hand and she chops the lemon in anger, angry chop. Okay, so this angry chop will be second reaction. And the main action is that she's saying, no, I'm not angry at you. And she cuts the lemon, okay, chops the lemon with anger. So this will show a second reaction. This will mean a lot. This will say, okay, yes, she is saying, I'm not angry at you. But in reality, she is angry because she have a second reaction that she is angrily chopping something. Here, you cannot show that, but here you can show that. Okay, so that's uh, a, a really good example of a second reaction. Uh, another uh, another uh, example over here is that, okay, this should be number eight. Uh, by mistake, I think it's written number, uh, like number seven over here. Okay, so let me change it to eight. Okay, so this is basically another example. What is the example? Uh, this cartoon character, he wears his hat, okay, and his hat is big and floppy, and then he starts running around, okay, and when he starts running around, his hat is uh, like, uh, you know, uh, he's uh, kind of flopping, okay, so he's running basically is the main action, his main action is that he's running. And his hat is also uh, swinging is the second reaction. So two animations are happening at the same time. The one animation, which is the main animation, which is his running. The second animation is that his hat is also animating. So two different kind of animation. Uh, main animation, then secondary animation. So secondary animation here will give the uh, like a feeling that he's a funny guy because he's, a, he's wearing a funny hat. Okay. So that's a one way of doing that. Okay. Now we have here uh, the ninth principle of animation, which is timing. This one is also a little bit technical. Now, what is the timing? Timing is the amount of frames between poses. How much time it takes a, a cartoon character to fall, uh, to uh, bow down and pick up a ball? Maybe three or four seconds. Okay, but uh, in cartoon, a little bit different. But all, uh, but it, uh, it will be uh, somewhat. Uh, more or less three or four seconds okay so that you have to maintain the time you cannot show that he is going very slowly down and pick up picking up his uh, object like a rock or stone from the ground very slowly up so your animation will not look uh, like good it will not look realistically right uh, really, uh, when it comes to timing so you have to make sure you maintain the timing okay now other thing uh, other type of timing is the timing of your scene okay uh, like suppose comedians actor actor work with their timing to get the uh, maximum impact from uh, from their lines okay like suppose if you want to show uh, like a character gets punched so you have to maintain a correct time when he should get punched if he will get punched at the wrong time so it will not look funny and people will not laugh but if he gets punched at the right time, so people will start laughing because they were not expecting he will get punched and he got punched at the very right time. Okay, so that's one way of uh, doing a timing as well. Timing can apply weight. Light objects have such much, uh, have much less resistance and usually move much quicker than heavy objects. Like if you have two characters, one is very uh, slow. Okay, like a turtle and one is very fast like a rabbit. So you will show that turtle is moving very slowly and you know, uh, walking in funny way, but not too slow, but means like compared to rabbit, he will be slow and rabbit will be very fast because he's running very fast. 
so speed can imply emotion uh, uh, also like suppose if you want to show a man is very happy and he's walking so you uh, a fast walking man okay a fast walk may mean happiness okay so he will uh, he will uh, uh, he, uh, if you want to show happiness you can make the cartoon character walk a uh, walk kind of little faster if you will make if you want to show his depression his sadness then what will happen then how you will do that you will make him walk slowly so he will he will have a slow walk he is like uh, he is kind of sad or depressed so timing also can show the emotion and can show that mood of the person the tenth principle of animation okay is the exaggeration exaggeration is highly used in animation what is the exaggeration? Exaggeration is uh, exaggeration is used to increase the readability of emotions and actions. In this case, if you will see that uh, a person when he sees something, you know, uh, like uh, like like greedy, like it, like this man, he uh, he saw uh, like his favorite car, okay or a beautiful car in his garage and he's surprised like what this car is doing in his garage and then his eyes pops out his mouth widely open his tongues comes out or a person who's very hungry and he sees in a cartoon often you have seen a person who's very very hungry and he sees a food this thing happen okay so animation is not a sub uh, like a subtle medium it's not something uh, where you apply realistic uh emotions to it animation is something like uh, which is not un, uh, which is not realistic which, which is unreal so you can exaggerate anything inside the animation but don't over exaggerate okay so individual exaggerated poses may look silly as still but add dramatic impact when viewed for a split second so suppose if i will see this for uh, 10 seconds it will look weird but on a scene, if it appears for only two seconds or one second, then it will not look weird. It will look funny. Okay. So exaggeration, you cannot prolong it. Don't uh, make it uh, like for a longer time. If you want to show exaggeration, show it for a split second, like maybe, maybe one second or a half second. Okay. So animators should be careful to use exaggeration to increase understanding of feeling. Be careful not to over exaggerate everything. Do not over exaggerate. Just make a little exaggeration for a little time, so that person will see, will uh, feel, and he will uh, laugh. That's all. Okay. The eleventh principle of animation is solid drawing. Okay. Now, what is a solid drawing? Solid drawing is basically, uh, whenever you have a character, your character when you draw on a paper. You will draw his one dimension, but in reality, you have to keep in mind that in animation, the character will also rotate. Okay, he will move to left or right. He will move his hands. Or uh, you can see his back. You can see his side. So that means you should have in mind that how that how the character will look like from the all the other sides. Okay, so uh, in three D animation, it's quite easy to do that. Okay. Because in 3D animation, you uh, he can be easily seen from all the sides. But in 2D animation, you have to draw all the uh, sides of the character so that whenever you're doing animation, you can easily uh, when you rotate, you are planning to rotate him. He should uh, his other side should be shown as well. Okay. For example, in paper you will draw him like this. But what if he turns around? So there should be his other side, uh, how his other side should look. So, solid drawing means you should create the all the sides of your character, okay, or your object. Like in Mickey Mouse, you see him from the front angle also, you see him from the left angle also, you see him from the back also, you left also, from all the other angles you can see him. So, this is basically a solid drawing too, okay. It shows all the sides of your character or object. Now, the last principle of animation is the appeal, okay? Now, what is an appeal? Appeal is basically the characteristics of your uh, cartoon character, 
how your cartoon character is. So animated characters need to have a unique personality and have a wide range of emotions. Okay, so what is the appeal? How your character will look when he is happy. How your character will look when he is excited. How your character will look when he is, he is fearful or embarrassed or angry or scared, etc. Okay, so character flaws are actually a good thing. Audience can be sympathetic to characters that have a flaw or two. Okay, so your appeal is also a personality of a character. A character can be an angry character. He can be a scared character. And what you can do is that on purpose, you can add a flaw, okay, or two flaws, like maybe a character, he's scared from ghosts, like in uh, Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, the shaggy is a scared person, okay, so that is his flaw, something that is, uh, is a negative, okay, so something like that you can do. And uh, complex personalities are more ethical dilemma and to uh, add to the character appeal, okay, so uh, if you will add these kind of flaws, his, comp uh, his uh, personality will have a complexity, okay? So that will make, uh, like, you know, uh, it will make your character more appealing. So when you have a cartoon character, try to add a little bit appeal to it, okay? Like, is he's a funny guy, he's a bad guy, what, uh, like, uh, is he scared from things, if he's not scared from things? So like a personality, make him a real life thing, okay? Like he should have emotion. So just like Bambi, Bambi is a very softly, very scared, innocent fear. Mickey Mouse is a very funny uh, mouse and do clumsy things at times. Cruella, she is very, uh, you know, a cruel sort of bad personality that she hates the dogs or something like that, okay? So these were the 12 principles of animation. Anyone who have questions, please let me know right now. Is everything clear? Is there any question you have? Okay, good. So now uh, I will show you uh, one uh, YouTube page, which uh, is a really good YouTube channel. Okay, so it's uh, it's known as Alan Baker's tutorial. So he have a lot of good videos, and one of his video is about the twelve principles of animation. So in your free time, you can watch that. Okay. So let me show you that here. So on your screen now you can see Alan Baker's tutorial page. Okay. So it's a uh, he have a lot of subscribers. He have uh, you know uh, amazing number of subscribers here. So you can see that he have very good tutorial videos and he also have some. Uh, other stuff. So if you will go to videos, okay, part here. So you can see that he have one video which is uh, which got 5.7 million views, and it's a really good video. So it is called the 12 principles of animation. So at your free time, you can. So you can uh, watch that at your free time. Just go to his page, Alan Baker Tutorial. Okay. And then you can search for this the tutorial principles of animation and you can watch it after this class today. You can watch this one. Okay. So guys, uh, uh, let's uh, move back to uh, Blackboard. So I will see you now on Blackboard. Okay. So I will close this stream now, uh, YouTube stream. So let's meet on Blackboard.